Good afternoon. Welcome to this meeting of the Subcommittee on Landmarks, Public Siting, and Maritime Uses. I'm Council Member Adrian Adams, the Chair of this Subcommittee. We are joined today by Council Members Koo, Barron, and Miller. And as we wait for LPC, we will pause at this time. Thank you.
Today we will be holding a public hearing on LU-356, the designation by the Landmarks Preservation Commission of the Park Terrace West, West 127th Street Historic District. The Historic District is located in the Inwood section of Manhattan in Councilmember Rodriguez's district. According to LPC's designation report, the Park Terrace West, West 217th Street Historic District consists of a picturesque enclave of 15 early 20th century Tudor and colonial revival style houses. LPC held a hearing on the designation on February 20th, 2018. Eight people spoke in favor of the designation as proposed. The commission also received letters in support of the district from United States Congressman Adriano Espeyat, the Office of Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer, Moving Forward Unidos, Inwood Preservation, Inwood Owners Coalition, and four letters from property owners on Park Terrace West and West 217th Street, and several property owners from the Inwood neighborhood. The commission received no testimony or letters in opposition to the proposed designation. I now call on LPC to testify on the designation. Kate McHale, before you begin, council will swear you in. Could you state your name before answering? Uh, do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the subcommittee and in response to all council member questions? Kate Lemus McHale, yes, I do. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, Chair Adams and subcommittee members. Um, I'm Kate Lemus McHale, Director of Research at the Landmarks Preservation Commission. Thank you for the opportunity to present the recent designation of the Park Terrace West, West 217th Street Historic District, which was designated on December 11th, 2018. Located in Inwood, near the, near the northern tip of Manhattan, uh, the district consists of a picturesque enclave of 15 early 20th century houses. Its appealing character and historic significance is created by its uniform scale, architectural styles, and consistency of building materials, combined with an emphasis on landscaped gardens and making provisions for the automobile. This district was identified as part of the Commission's work in Inwood, including surveys of the neighborhood in 2008 and more recently in conjunction with the recent rezoning to identify opportunities for historic preservation. At LPC's public hearing on November 20th, um, since you just listed that testimony, I won't repeat it all, but we did have a lot of support for this um, designation. Um, including from elected officials and neighborhood groups and uh, property owners in the district. The historic district extends along the north side of West 217th Street and along Park Terrace West as shown here. It is a cohesive grouping of two-story brick houses that is surrounded by early 20th century apartment buildings and nearby parks. More commonly seen in other boroughs, these freestanding and semi-detached houses reflect the time period when they were built using land that had been part of a large estate at the northernmost tip of Manhattan. Inwood's topography has played an important role in the history of the area and in the development and physical character of the Park Terrace West, West 217th Street Historic District. Shown in this 1836 topographical map, Inwood's hills were the location of Revolutionary War forts, and its valleys and plateaus were farmed, quarried, and later became vast estates. And Kingsbridge Road, now Broadway, ran diagonally through the center, linking it to Lower Manhattan. Inwood was historically known as Tubby Hook until around um, 1864. Initially, the land on which the historic district was developed was part of the Isaac and Michael Dykeman farm. In 1851, it was divided and a 26 acre parcel was sold to John Ferris Seaman and his wife, Ann Drake Seaman. The Seaman estate is shown in these maps. Um, on the top in the red rectangle is the, is the general area of the district. Um, and on this map is shown by the red dot. And as you can see in the 1885 Robinson map on the right, the city began to develop around the edges of these estates in the late 19th century, and that really lends to the particular sense of place and the way it stands out from the rest of the neighborhood today. Upon Anne Drake Seaman's death in 1878, the property was left to a nephew. Drake divided the bulk of the property into lots, which were sold to developers. 
This 1900 map shows these properties on the streets that were laid out on the Seaman Drake property. The Seaman Drake Estate Mansion, shown on the lower block on this map and in the photo on the left, remained until 1938. In 1906, the extension of the Interborough Rapid Transit subway line spurred the initial residential development of the area, and you can see uh, that starting on the right. Further development was spurred by the subsequent opening of the IND subway line in 1920. Additionally, the creation of two neighborhood parks, Isham Park, a gift from Julia Isham Taylor in 1911, and Inwood Hill Park, which was created by the city in 1916, provided public amenities that drew developers and residents to the area. The historic district was developed with detached and semi-detached houses in the 1920s and 30s as larger apartment buildings were being constructed elsewhere in the neighborhood. By 1934, as you can see on this map, most of the houses had been built in the historic district, and the Seaman Drake Mansion um, was still there, the last portion of the area to be developed. Uh, and this 1937 aerial photograph shows a similar view um, before the Seaman Drake House property was um, redeveloped and the orange arrows on this photo indicate the buildings that are included in the historic district. You'll note that it draws um, the boundary does not include the large apartment building that separates buildings on Park Terrace West and that was not included because it doesn't share the same architectural qualities, scale, or really his development history as, as these houses. Um, just some analysis of the, of the houses. As you can see on this map, the historic district contains houses um, along the block of West 217th Street and the northern section of Park Terrace West where the two streets intersect. Designed in both the Colonial Revival and the Tudor Revival styles, they were built between 1921 and 1935. And the historic district shows a high level integrity uh, with, with really only minor alterations such as the replacement of windows. In some cases, dormers have been resided or some of the um, vertical woodwork that was part of the Tudor um, stylistic features has been replaced. But in general, they really retain a high level of integrity. Um, and the picturesque streetscapes possess a special character and sense of place defined by the house's uniform scale, use of similar period styles and materials, and similar setbacks from the street with gardens that accentuate the topography. The earliest buildings in the district are these residences along Park Terrace West. They were constructed in 1921. And these combine elements of the colonial revival style and the craftsman style, especially in terms of the patterned brickwork and horizontal emphasis. Farther along Park Terrace West, these were constructed a few years later between 1924 and 1925. Um, they were designed by Abraham Zacharias as two family houses. And they also combine colonial revival stylistic features with craftsman features and retain um, original arts and crafts style doors and decorative tile at their entrances. On Park, uh, along West 217th Street, the houses were designed um, primarily in the Tudor revival style um, and built between 1933 and 1935. Uh, they were all developed and constructed by the same firm, Kessler and Sayeta, as speculative properties. Um, and the Tudor, Tudor revival style is evident in their steep uh, roof gables, half timbering, prominent chimneys, and turret enclosed entries. Several of the houses mirror each other alongside, on either side of a, dry, a shared driveway, so there's a, a nice consistency along the street. Influenced by the early 20th century modern car culture, all of these houses were built with garages, either in the basement or as separate buildings in the rear of the lot. The houses are set back from the street with gardens, retaining walls, and pathways that are influenced by the topography. Unusual for Manhattan, this small historic district reflects the popularity of many suburban qualities along with convenient access to Manhattan. And this part of Inwood was advertised at, at the time this district was developed as country living in the city. 
The Park Terrace West, West 217th Street Historic District is a picturesque enclave of residential architecture that illustrates the popularity of revivalist styles used for residential developments in the 1920s and 30s. It retains a high level of integrity and a strong sense of place. And LPC hopes the council will uphold this designation, uh, which has broad support from its stakeholders. And I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Um, I, I, I just have to say that had you not presented this as a part of Manhattan, this would be Queens. So I just wanted to shout out my borough yep. um, with the Tudor style. Really, really beautiful, um, by the way. Uh, are there questions from my colleagues today? Questions? Okay. Uh, I'd like to also mention we have been joined by Council Member Traeger. Thank you very much for your testimony. Thank you and apologize for arriving late. It's okay. Thanks. We understand. We understand. I see that we do have one member of the public that wishes to testify on this item. Mr. David Thumb, will you please step up? And please state your name for the record. Uh, David Tom, T-H-O-M. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. You may proceed. Apologize, I'm just pulling up my notes, which have now disappeared. <laughs> oh well. Um, so I am appearing today on behalf of the Park Terrace North Block Association, which represents the West 217th Street Block. That's one of the old names for it. Um, more specifically, I am uh, representing the property owners at 527 uh, 531-533-535-537-539-545 West 217th Street, um, 81-89-91, uh, sorry, 95 and 96 Park Terrace West. Uh, all of whom I've been coordinating with throughout the landmarks process. And we're just here to uh, say that we support the designation as property owners of uh, some of the affected properties. And uh, we feel that it is indeed a, a very um, unique collection of properties as representative of a very specific moment in time in Manhattan's development. Um, there are many additional great architectural resources in Inwood and we certainly um, have heard and, and also uh, support the idea of additional historic districts in the future, but certainly this is a good start and we do ask that you uh, consider approving the designation as proposed. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them today. Thank you very much for being here. We certainly appreciate your testimony. Are there questions from my colleagues? Okay, thank you very much. You may step down. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public that wish to testify on this item? Seeing none, the public hearing on LU356 is now closed and this item will be laid over. That concludes our public hearings for today. I'd like to thank members of the public, my colleagues, council and land use staff for attending today's hearing. This meeting is hereby adjourned. <laughs>